Good morning everyone, I'm Adonis S. Impung. Today I will explain to you the classification of proteins and also the function as well. Mr. Baoi explained the structure and properties of protein. So let's move on and go with the classification and functions of so protein. Let's talk about the classifications of protein. Before that, let's give you a overview of protein. Proteins are complex biomolecules that play crucial roles in the biological processes of living organisms. They are classified into several categories based on their structure, function, and properties. Here are the main categories of proteins. First is structural proteins, proteins that provide shape and support to cells and tissues. Examples including collagen, keratin, and elastin. Structural proteins are a class of proteins that provide stability and support to the cells and tissues of an organism. They are an important component of an extracellular matrix which helps maintain the shape, form, and stability of cells, tissues, and organs. Structural proteins are composed of long chains of amino acids and can be found in many forms including fibers, sheets, and networks. One of the most well-known structural proteins is collagen, which makes up about a third of all proteins in the human body. It is a fibrous protein that provides strength and support to tissues such as skin, tendons, ligaments, and bones. Another example of the structural protein is elastin, which provides elasticity to tissues like the lungs and skin. Another example of the structural proteins protein is keratin which is the primary structure structural components of hair and nails. It provides strength, toughness and resistance of abrasion making it well suited for its role or in these tissues. Additionally Actin and myosin, which are involved in muscle contraction, can also be considered as structural proteins as they help maintain the structure of muscle fibers. So next, enzymes, proteins that act as a catalysis, catalysis to speed up the chemical reactions in the cell, they are critical for metabolic processes and energy product production. An example of an enzyme in action is the digestion of food in the human body. The enzyme lactase found in the small intestine helps break down lactose into simpler sugars, glucose, and galactose that can be absorbed into the blood bloodstream. <coughs> Without lactase, lactose would not be efficiently broken down and absorbed, leading to lactose intolerance, a common digestive disorder. Third is transport proteins, proteins that help transport molecules across cell membranes such as hemoglobin which carries oxygen in the, bud, in the blood. An example of a uh, transport protein is the sodium potassium pump which helps maintain the balance of sodium and potassium ions inside and outside the cell. The pump works by actively transporting three sodium ions out of the cell and two potassium ions into the cell against their concentration gradients. This helps to maintain the 
resisting potential of the cell membrane and supports various cellular functions. Next is regulatory proteins. Proteins that help regulate cellular processes such as insulin which regulates blood sugar levels. Let's say there is a factory that produces a certain product. The enzymes in the cell are like the workers in the factory. The product of the factory needs to be made in just the right amount and at just the right time. The regulatory protein act like a manager that tells the workers when to work and how much to produce. For example, the regulatory protein lactose repressor controls the activity of the enzyme lactase in bacteria. Lactase break down lactose, a sugar found in milk, into glucose and galactose. The lactose repressor protein mm, binds bind to the lactase gene and prevent it from being transcribed to, into RNA and made into lactase enzyme. When the lactase is present in the cell, it is bind to the lactase repressor and changes its shapes causing it to release its grip on the lactase gene. The lactase gene can be transcribed and the lactase enzyme produced allowing the bacteria to use the lactose as a source of energy. Next is storage proteins. Proteins that are stored excess nutrients <coughs> such, such as ferritin which stores iron <coughs> storage proteins are proteins that are synthesized and stores store in cells for later use as a source of energy or building blocks for cell growth and repair an example of storage protein is ovalbumin which is found in egg whites and is used as a source of protein and human diets in seeds naman Another example of story proteins are the glo globulins which serve, serve as a source of nutrients for, for the developing plant. When the seed germ germinates, the stored proteins are broken down and used to support the growth of the young plant. In this way, storage proteins play a crucial role in the survival of both animals and plants providing a reserve of energy and nutrients during period of scarcity contractile proteins proteins that play a role in muscle contraction such as actin and myosin uh, a simple explanation of contractile proteins is actin and myosin actin is a thin filament that forms the structural basis of muscles muscle fibers while myosin is a thick filament that interacts with actin to produce the force necessary necessary for contraction when a muscle is stimulated the myosin heads mm, bind to the actin filaments and pull them toward the center of the sacromere causing it to the shorten the repeated sliding of elements is what produces muscle construction lastly the immune proteins proteins involved in the immune response such as antibodies which help recognize and neutralize foreign invaders one of the example of immune protein is immunoglobin also known as an antibody antibodies are produced by white blood cells and are specific to a particular pathogen they recognize and bind to pathogens marking them for destruction by other components of the immune system so another example is can cyto 
cans, I say two kinds, which are small proteins that coordinate the immune response by communicating between cells. For example, they can attract immune cells on the site of an infection and regulate the production of antibodies. Let's discuss functions of proteins. Proteins perform a variety of functions in the body, including first is structural. Proteins such as keratin, collagen, and elastin provide support and shape to cells and tissues. It helps provide strength, support, and stability to these tissues and it also plays a role in maintaining their elasticity and flexibility. Collagen fibers are composed of long fibrous proteins that are organized in a specific way of provide maximum tensile strength and they also help to resist bending and stretching forces. This makes collagen an essential component of many body structures and helps to keep them functioning properly. Second is enzymes. Proteins catalyze chemical reactions helping to regulate metabolism and digestion. The function of lactase is to catalyze the chemical reaction that breaks down lactose, making it easier for the body to digest and absorb the sugars. So third is transport proteins such as hemoglobin and transferrin transport oxygen oxygen, iron, and other molecules throughout the body. The function of sodium potassium pump is to transport three sodium ions out of the cell and two potassium ions into the cell, thereby maintaining the balance of ionic concentration across the cell membrane. This helps to maintain the resisting potential of the cell and also plays <coughs> a crucial role in many physiological process such as muscle cont contraction, nerve impulse transmission and maintaining the proper fluid balance in cells. So next is hormonal Proteins such as insulin regulate growth and metabolism by acting as hormones. One, one example of hormonal protein is insulin. It is produced by beta cells in the pancreas and regulates blood sugar levels by the promoting glucose uptake into cells and stimulating the conversion of glucose into glycogen in the liver and muscle tissue. In this way, insulin helps to maintain overall glucose um, hemiotasis, hemiotasis, hemiostasis and prevent high blood pressure levels. Immune def next is called immune defense. Proteins such as antibodies and complement help to defend the body against invading pathogens. <coughs> Their function is to <coughs> sorry, identify and neutralize foreign sub substances in the body such as viruses and bacteria by binding, binding to them and marking them for destruction by other components of the immune system. So next is storage. Proteins such as ferritin store important molecules including iron, 
the, the function of ovalbumin is to provide a source of amino acids for the developing embryo an embryo as well as for the mother during evolution evolution the protein is stored in the egg until it needs for growth and development allowing the egg to provide essential nutrients for the developing organism lastly the muscle contraction proteins such as actin and myosin are involved in muscle contraction a simple explanation of muscle contraction is a bicep curl where the bicep muscle contracts to lift a weight uh, the function of muscle contraction is to generate force to move bones and produce body movements as well as maintaining posture and generate heat so these are these are just a few examples and functions of proteins can vary greatly greatly depending on their specific specific structure and role in the body that's all thank you